Armando Torres, uh, still part two. This is Encounters with the Nongawal. This section is called Teaching the Art of Stalking. Little by little, Carlos's stories had had their effect on me. One day, I sat down to seriously consider the amount of effort I invested in sustaining my self-importance. Not in the course and common forms it usually shows itself, like self-sufficiency or whining for attention, but in its subtle aspects, linked to fundamental ideas that I had had about the world. These reflections didn't bring me any certainty. On the contrary, I began to notice how the uniformity of the ideological framework in which I lived, and which I had always taken for granted, trembled. When I told Carlos this, he saw it as something quite natural. You are learning how to stalk yourself, he told me. It is what you should have done ever since you learned to use your reason. I had already read about the art of stalking, a hunting strategy which consists of using your prey's own habits and routines to catch it. We can apply this strategy to ordinary life, for example, to business, but we can also project it against our internal demons like doubt, laziness, and self-indulgence. Taking advantage of this opportunity, we had some free time before his lecture began. I asked him to tell me more about this, but to my complete astonishment, he told me that he could not do it as long as I wasn't committed to the point of death to the teachings. Why? Because you would wind up turning against me. Learning about dreaming doesn't offend anyone. The worst you can do is, the, is to not believe that such a thing is possible. Stalking, on the other hand, the way sorcerers practice it, is very offensive to reason. Many warriors avoid, avoid speaking about it because they don't have the stomach for it. In the initial phase, the apprentice is under crossfire and is very frustrated, not able to let go of his ego. Like a coin, stalking has two faces. On the one hand, it is the easiest thing in the world. On the other, it is a very difficult technique, not because it's complex, but because it deals with aspects of oneself that people usually don't want to deal with. Stalking induces minuscule but very solid movements of the assemblage point. Not like dreaming, which moves you deeply, but bounces you like a rubber ball and returns you immediately to what you were. When you look around, you see everything the same as you did, as you always did. So you will continue to use your everyday approach to things. If, in this situation, you are forced to make some change by your instructor, I'll bet you anything that you would leave offended or wounded in your pride and quit the teaching. I asked him how, then sorcerers taught this art. He answered, traditionally it is taught in a state of heightened awareness, and it is left until the end. It is not something that, that's openly talked about. One must read between the lines. This part of the knowledge be, belongs to the teachings for the left side. It takes many years to remember what it's all about, and many more to become able to practice it. On the level you are at now, the only thing that allows you to handle stalking is to approach it with dreaming methods. If at any point you should feel that I am touching on topics that are too personal or you have an attack of suspicions, look at your hands and use any other reminder you have chosen. The dreaming attention will help you break your fixation. The Mark of the Nongwal In spite of this reticence on another occasion, Carlos himself accepted answering my questions on the topic of stalking as long as we kept the theoretical considerations. Taking advantage of his goodwill, I asked him to explain the practical uses of the art of stalking. He explained, Stalking is the central activity of an energy tracker. Although it can be applied with his astonishing results to our dealings with people, it is designed mainly to tune the practitioner. Manipulating and controlling others is an arduous task, but it is incomparably more difficult to control ourselves. For that reason, stalking is the technique that distinguishes the Nongwal. 
Stalking can be defined as the ability to fix the assemblage point in new positions. The warrior who is stalking is a hunter, but as opposed to an ordinary hunter who has his mind set on his material interests, the warrior pursues a bigger prey, his self-importance. That prepares him to face the challenge of dealing with his fellow men, something that dreaming by itself cannot resolve. Sorcerers who do Sorcerers who don't learn how to stalk turn into grumpy people. Why? Because they don't have the patience to tolerate people's stupidity. Stalking is natural to us due to a characteristic of our animal heritage. To survive, we have all developed habits of behavior which mold our energy and help us adapt. By studying those routines, an attentive observer can accurately predict the behavior of any animal or a human being at any given moment. Warriors know that any habit is an addiction. It can tie you to the consumption of drugs or going to church every Sunday. The difference is in the form, not in essence. In the same way, when we get used to thinking that the world is reasonable or that the things we believe in are the only reality, we are victims of a habit which clouds our senses and makes us see only what is familiar to us. Routines and templates of behavior, which we mechanically follow even when they don't make any sense anymore. To be a stalker, you must have freed yourself from these imperatives of survival. Because he is the owner of his decisions, a warrior stalker is a person who has banished from his life all vestiges of addiction. He only has to recover his energetic integrity to be free. And since he has freedom of choice, he can be involved in calculated forms of behavior, either to deal with people or with conscious entities. The result of this maneuver is not routine participation, but stalking, because it consists of studying the behaviors of others. What is the sense of all this? He answered, from your point of view, none. Freedom doesn't obey reasons. However, your entire being shakes when you break your routines because it exposes a myth of immortality. Pointing at people returning from work, he told me, what do you believe they went out to do? These people went out to live their, their last day. The sad thing is, is that probably very few of them know it. Every day is unique and the world is not the way everyone has told us it is. Cancel the force of habit is a decision that you make once and for all. Starting from that act, a warrior becomes a stalker. And couldn't it happen that the warrior may end up making of his purpose something ordinary? No. This is something that you have to understand. Because otherwise, your search for impeccability will lose its freshness and you'll end up betraying it. To break routines is not the purpose of the path. It is only one of the means. The goal is to be aware. Keeping that in mind, another definition of stalking is an unbending attention on a total result. That kind of attention applied to an animal results in a hunting piece. If we apply it to another person, it produces a client, a pupil, or a romantic relationship. And applied to an inorganic being, it provides what sorcerers call an ally. But only if we apply stalking to ourselves can it be considered a Toltec art because it produces something precious, awareness.